What's up, YouTube? This is Megan. Welcome back to my channel, to my returning subscribers. However, if this is your first time joining me on today, welcome. It's here we use information from celestial bodies to help us gain a better understanding of our favorite celebrities, world events, but then most importantly, our damn selves. So with that being said, thumbs up this video, subscribe to become a part of the family. Come on in, have a seat. So as you can tell by the title today, I want to talk about the incident of the 10 year old Wisconsin boy who actually unalived his mother. So according to reports, there was a 10 year old boy who had a very long stemming history of rageful and cruel behavior. I'm talking about hurting animals, the whole nine, which everybody know hurting animals is really like a textbook indicator of somebody who is not quite right in the head, right? These are just the reddest of red flags. However, he wanted a virtual reality headset from Amazon. And I suppose his final straw was the fact that his mother woke him up at 6 a.m. and uh, refused to purchase the headset for him. And so his response to that was to go to the family uh, handgun, which was actually locked away, but he was able to figure out where his mother kept the key. Y'all know children are very smart. They notice things. He retrieved the gun and went into the laundry room and shot his mother in the face, thereby killing her instantly. Now, following this, the mother's body was discovered by her daughter, who happened to be 26, and she called the authorities. When authorities arrived to the scene, the little boy said it was an accident. And so because of his age, they allowed him to stay with family. However, the following day, family reached out to authorities because the boy had actually confessed to doing this on purpose. And so as of now, he's being charged as an adult. I'm not sure as to what that entails. So those of y'all who have more information on that, feel free to let me know. I doubt that means they're going to take a 10 year old and throw him in a adult penitentiary. But I'm just going to assume that means they're really going to prosecute him to the fullest extent of the law which in my opinion they should even at the age of 10 he does not belong in the free world and society now according to some reports i have seen that the grandmother which i believe is the mother's mother is pleading for leniency in his case however granny i need you to chill on this one okay unless you want to be next unless we want to be smoking on the granny pack I'm going to need you to come up off of Jeffrey Dahmer, okay, and just let the court system do what it's going to do. And clear, clearly, obviously, this boy has some really deeply rooted issues. And so one can even argue that he does need some sort of psychiatric mental help, which I don't disagree with. But bottom line, he does not belong in the free world and society. He is a menace to society and a threat to us all, okay? You can do that to your mama. We don't stand a chance. Hello, okay? So with that being said, I wanted to put this event into more of an astrological context, so to speak. And I wanna do that because very often I do speak about children and astrology. Now, in the natal chart, children is gonna be a fifth house matter. The fifth house rules children, and that's because it's, sign of rulership is Leo. Okay. And when it comes to children, we're taught that children are the lights of our lives, which is very true. I'm not saying that's not true. I'm a mother. I love my baby. However, uh, there is also a saying that everybody does not need to have children. And when people use this saying more often, they're referring to a person's ability or inability to raise a well-adjusted human being which is also true. But to me, the phrase also takes on another meaning, which is you never really know who you are giving birth to. Everybody has children and we have a lot of hopes and dreams for our children. Taking this back to the fifth house in the natal chart, the fifth house also deals with our purpose. The fifth house is our pride. It's our joy. All of which are very common sayings that people use when describing their children. You know, your child could be the star of your life or when people have children 
you're holding the baby in your arms and you're thinking, wow, this child could be the president. They could be an astronaut. However, the fifth house also deals with gambling. It deals with things that are left up to chance. It deals with risks, meaning you don't know what you're going to get definitively. So yes, you could be holding the president of tomorrow in your arms, but you could also be holding your killer. You could be holding a serial killer. You could be holding any, I mean, really anybody. It could be anybody. And this is not popular to say because, you know, we're taught that like, you know, that's just not cool to say. But the truth of the matter is not everybody needs to have kids because some people have a lot of deeply rooted karma tied to children. And I'm not blaming this woman at all. And I know it can get really tricky, especially when you have multiple children, which she did. However, there are going to be some bad seeds. Now, I also do believe in nature and nurture. So meaning just as much as a person can be predisposed to certain things, absolutely. One's environment does play a very important role in how a person is going to turn out. But once again, I want to look at this woman's chart and point out some indicators that could support the fact that her relationship with this child was a very, once again, karmic one, and where we could kind of see this coming within her natal chart. And this is the reason that I actually feel like it should be normalized uh, as an astrologer to tell people that they don't need kids. There, That is if they don't already have them. You know what I mean? Now, nobody can definitively say, hey, your child is going to grow up and do this, 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 this for certain 100%. But there are signs. There are red flag indicators. There are clues. So let's explore some of those clues today. Now, in all transparency, I do not know this mother's name. Okay, y'all drop down in the comment section. Let me know her name. But a little birdie told me that she was born on March 5th, 1978 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Now, you can see her natal chart casted like right here, like so. And because we also do not have her time of birth, I use a placeholder. And whenever you use a placeholder time, most people use 12 p.m., you use 12 a.m., really whatever uh, time of your choice, but you should forego using the house placements, okay? So her ascendant that's on here, the house placements, let's not focus on those, okay? Disregard. We can safely ascertain a lot just based off of sheer planetary placement and aspect. And in this case, the first thing that stood out to me was the fact that this uh, young mother, I mean, she's still relatively a young mother. Uh, her son was at the 14th degree of Pisces. And it is making a wide conjunction, but I was still included a conjunction to Venus and Pisces. And the thing about Pisces, you got to remember the sun also deals with the children as well. So when it comes to Pisces sun women, um, I would even say to a certain degree Pisces moon, but when children are involved, these are the type of mothers who often have a difficult time placing limits and limitations okay, upon their, their kids. You know, that Piscean energy, because of its Neptune co-rulership, oftentimes produces this sense of either selflessness to where a person in extreme form can really sacrifice their own wants and needs at the behest of other people. And once again, taking it back to the son's involvement, this could Create a situation where essentially this woman may have been the type of person to just spoil her kid anyway. You know, um, the type to have a really hard time maybe telling her kid no. Especially when it comes to things like money, buying him stuff, right? That son venus conjunction um, where to a lot of these parents, like their kids could be the apple of their eye. And telling them no and things like that may have been difficult. You know, Pisces in its lower octave is also um, very much a lack of boundaries, right? So 
I actually see a lot of really dark-sided Pisces moms become slaves to their children because of this. Where, you know, the type of mom where they let their kids run them. You see that a lot. Uh, and once again, that theme of like having a spoiled child. So that sun Venus conjunction actually made a lot of sense. And this is also going to be even further amplified by the fact that she does have sun square Neptune and Sag. So that could deal with where when it comes to her children, she's liable to go overboard, overboard, above and beyond where there are maybe very little limitations or where on some level, some level, there's, there's these people have a really hard time. Uh, I don't want to say keeping up with their children, but when it comes to like management of, of their children and how they navigate through parenthood in that way. Now, in some cases, these are people who um, could even have elements of negligence right? When it comes to their parent. And I'm not in any way trying to say this mom was negligent or something like that, but just being honest about, you know, how this could play out. Um, that's just the way that Piscean energy and that Pisces sun square Neptune and Sag could play out. But another manifestation of these, uh, energy signatures could also be having a child that is ill, having a child that is sick, Okay, Pisces deals with institutionalism. It could also even deal with mental illness. So, um, I don't know if he's the type of kid, because I know he had issues in the past where he had to be apprehended. But that son, uh, Neptune Square, could deal with having a child that may have to be institutionalized to a certain degree. Right. But that could also even just mean jail or prison, where it's like maybe he was a kid who was just kind of bound for, you know, that's just unfortunately, right? Uh, he may have also been on some sort of medication. And this is actually further reinforced with the fact that she has the asteroid Arachne, which deals with drama or where there could be a lot of deceit, um, where something can get really messy. It's at the 14th degree of Virgo opposing her son. So that could deal with like ongoing issues surrounding her son being on uh, medication, right? So issues with his health. So that definitely reinforces that. Uh, issues with trying to get her son the proper help that he needed. And I mean, for some some people, you know, this could also manifest in avoidance. So when you round it back out with that Pisces sun Venus conjunction, denial is a really big part of that you know this could be another reason why these moms kind of let their children run them you know these could be parents who are very avoidant when it comes to certain things or and it can be in denial about certain things especially if they're the type to spoil their children or view them with like rose colored glasses or something like that or or Pisces another theme of that Pisces energy is victimization so that sun Venus conjunction could you know reinforce uh situations where a person is going to be victimized by their children um where they themselves could have been victims and things like that and i would bet money that this little boy's father has some similar type of programming because in a woman's chart the son could also deal with the men that you deal with so in the same respect that you know, this could point towards her son having some major mental health issues, major issues with institutionalism. Very well, you know, it could be the situation that the father has as well. I mean, his father, I'm assuming, is not in his life, uh, which is another one of that sun, Neptune, sun square, Neptune kind of um, effect, right? It's another effect of that, having a, a, a guy that comes in your life and he just kind of dips, very much sun square Neptune. Like, but I wonder if the father had any type of history with these things also. Another reason why I'm like, y'all gotta be careful because you have to be mindful of who you having kids with. You know what I mean? She has the asteroid prop properina, uh, which deals with separation from the family, death, kidnapping, issues with custody. It's conjoined to her Saturn and Leo. And so let's get into that. That Saturn and Leo 
oftentimes, it's, I see this very often in the charts of individuals who have a lot of karma, like I was saying initially, tied to their children. And when I say karma, I mean a lot of difficult, heartbreaking experiences that these people could go through with their kids or in the area of kids. It could also manifest in issues with disciplining children. Saturn is the planet of discipline. Issues with being respected by your children. And the same could even go for relationships. Children could be a burden with Saturn in Leo. Children could run into issues with authorities. And it really just depends on how the Saturn is placed and aspected. And this situation with it forming a quincunx to that Venus at the 25th degree of Pisces, it could deal with where a person could have a really difficult time uh, really enacting a lot of their boundaries and limits surrounding their child too, but especially when it comes to their money. I mean, technically, when the little boy, supposedly, as the story goes, ended up taking his mom's credit card anyway and purchasing the video game, that was a form of theft. And this quincunx could very well result in a person who could even be stolen from, especially by their child, right? So the kid who can take their mom's purse or take money out of her pocketbook. So in like an alternate reality, had this situation not occurred, right? I could definitely see him being one of those kids with her having that hookup in her chart, where he can even, hell, probably take her car and go for a, a joyride or some shit like that with that Sun-Mercury conjunction in Pisces. It's like he was taking her through it. He was taking her through it. So right here is where I would, if she were a client to me, I would just be honest. Like, And has she not had children or something like that? I, I would try to be as honest as I could about this because it's just not it's 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 not a good sign. <laughs> it's not a good sign. Um and then additionally, something else that stood out to me too. Her son, once again, son dealing with children, is forming a death quincunx, y'all. Is making a death quincunx to her Pluto. And that is another placement that could be very problematic and not everybody who has son Quincunx Pluto will experience being murdered by their child, but for some, it could absolutely point towards situations uh, involving one's child where there could be there could be a lot of life changing, life altering experiences, uh, high crisis, a, a, some crisis moment that's going to pertain to your child. So regardless as to what that is, in Aaliyah's mother's chart. Uh, I, I did a natal chart reading for her. She has son quincunx Pluto and, you know, her daughter actually was the one who died. So it, the energy could kind of swing both ways. Not to mention when you're talking about motherhood, how a woman, you know, approaches motherhood, you're going to have to look at her moon, the condition of the moon. Now, based on this chart, her moon is uh, at the zero degree of Aquarius. The moon sign is another one of those signs you take with a, uh, or placements you take with a grain of salt, I guess you could say. And this is due to the fact that the moon, because of how fast it rotates, could be in a bunch of different positions based on the time we were born, essentially. So with it being in such an early degree of Aquarius, there's a high probability that if she had some other time of birth, she could also be a latter degree Capricorn moon. So it just really depends. However, this moon is squaring Chiron at the second degree of Taurus. The number two could also deal with motherhood. It could deal with family. And this aspect really points towards having a very dysfunctional home. These are people who they themselves could come from very dysfunctional homes. Now, I really want to get into the fact that she is an Aries South Node. A lot of Aries South Nodes have uh, a lot of karmic relationships when it comes to like their relationship with 
conflict. They can find themselves in a lot of it, whether they grew up in it. Maybe these are people who could have lived hard lives. And a lot of that could be emphasized or it's going to manifest in their family dynamics. And this is because she also has that Mars at the 22nd degree of uh, cancer. So once again, issues within one's family. I'm pretty sure she probably has dated abusive men. Uh, I mean, the whole nine. And But these are people who can be defined by their roles within their family. For a lot of women, even by motherhood, okay, that they actually take a lot of shit from the people around them. Taking a lot of shit from, from their loved ones and whatnot. But there's a lot of dysfunction that comes with that, too. That Mars in cancer placement, especially with also her having Aries on the south node. And with that in mind, a lot of Aries south nodes, not all, not every single one, but many could find themselves in situations where they are on the, I mean, whether it's the giving in or even receiving in of violence. And with Mars and cancer, because Mars does rule Aries, we're talking about a more long the lines of like domestic abuse. And so once again, this is something that absolutely played out in her relationship with her youngest son. A lot of domestic abusive situations. And the number 22 as well with her Mars at the 22nd degree. That could denote issues within the home, issues within family. And a lot of it could pertain control. Uh, 22 is the control or be controlled degree. So domination, control, um, it just sounds like her son was out of control and there was this constant attempt to get him under control. But I feel like maybe she realized it once it was kind of too late. And that's the kind of energy I'm picking up from her chart, um, especially if she was one of those parents who was like avoidant and denial, whatever the case may be. Once again, this is not to put her at fault. I'm not saying she is at fault at all. Because what happened to her was really, really fucking trifling and crazy. But, you know, nonetheless, a lot of Aries South Nodes have karma tied to guns, weapons. Um, So there could have been a strong attraction towards these things. And once again, with that Mars and Cancer, the appeal may have been to protect herself, protect her home. That's why they had a family gun in the home. That's very Mars and Cancer. And, you know, subsequently, though, it's also how she met her demise, once her son got a hold of it. So uh, another really, you know, dark sided manifestation of this placement is very much encountering situations where maybe these are people who may, you know, get killed in their homes or, you know, shot, you know, shootings and things like that happening in the home or instances of violence. Not every person who has this is, is going to play out the same or maybe even to that same magnitude, but there's usually some type of variation, right? Uh, this could be a person fighting with their spouse and they pull out a knife or something or fighting with their spouse and, you know, maybe the authorities have to get caught. And that's where that Libra North note comes into play because usually after whatever incident that's going to be triggered by that Aries South note comes some type of intervention with the law. And that's that that Libra energy. And she does have Pluto conjoined to her, um, that Libra North note. So, you know, that could be literally this, you know, situation being picked up by the courts, being investigated, so on and so forth. It could also point to where maybe counseling or something like that was needed. Once again, I don't know if she took the little boy to see a therapist or whatever the case may be, or maybe the court should have been intervened in this situation a very long periodically time ago. But either way, you know, it could be an issue. But taking it back to Saturn in that conjunction to Properina, the uh, asteroid, right? In this case, this absolutely reinforces her being killed by the way of her child. Once again, Properina dealing with death and issues with uh, custody and maybe even being separated from her children. Maybe she has experienced some custody issues involving her children at some point in life too. But um, being subject to the cruelty of your own child is definitely one of the plausible manifestations of this conjunction. She has the asteroid Phaethon, which is kind of like Icarus. And if you know anything about Icarus, 
it's an asteroid that points to where we can be overly confident to our own detriment, where we can just be wild and take unnecessary risk. So she has faith on, which could also be deadlier, by the way. So it's like Icarus, but on steroids, way more uh, detrimental to a person's well-being, right? Where you just are making mistakes, careless mistakes that could be catastrophic to your well-being and your future. And Phaethon is at the 12th degree, which deals with victimization and sacrifice of Aries running contra parallel to her Uranus. That could even point to where she didn't have the gun secured the way that she should have. And I know they said the sun came, took the key. And don't get me wrong, that is absolutely premeditated vibes and unacceptable. But I do feel like maybe there could have been some type of uh, accident or her not really fully kind of crossing her T's and dotting her I's when it comes to like the storage of that weapon, if you will. And the fact that that Uranus is at the 16th degree, the number 16 can also deal with like, it could be a very catastrophic number. You know what I'm saying? Um, especially in Scorpio at that. So, you know, the quincunx or excuse me, the, the contra parallel that is forming to that faith on asteroid could point to where, you know, she makes a deadly mistake. She makes a deadly mistake with how she places or keeps her, her gun. And I even say that due to the fact that you had a gun in the house and you knew you had a little baby cray cray on your hands anyway. And once again, this is not faulting her, but based on this uh, placement, you know, I could see where maybe she was overly confident in her ability to maybe even handle her son's outbursts and things like that. Where it's like, she could be one of those people like, yeah, you know, they do those that they do that. There's a potentiality that he could do this and this and this, but no, I, I got things covered. I got a handle. And then it just kind of backfires. I also heard that she was in the medical field, the healthcare industry herself, which actually also puts this arachne placement into context with her arachne being at the 14th degree of Virgo, um, opposing her Pisces sun. So this could even point to where, and I don't know what facet of healthcare she was in, but where maybe she could have also been the type to um, try to help her son uh, herself kind of vibes is what I'm getting off of this too. Or uh, maybe even being someone who, because you feel like you know healthcare and things like that, maybe didn't really give him the treatment that, you know, he, he needed. Or maybe she did. Maybe she did. Like I said, I'm not trying to villainize her. I do think she did the best that she could with what she had. And I mean, and none of it warrants being slaughtered by your child. But um, yeah, I'm just... That's just what, what the energy signature can point to. So I didn't want to make this video too, too long, but I did get some requests uh, to cover uh, this woman's natal chart. Um, and, and, you know, in tandem to me being just naturally curious because the son was kind of a lost cause. And with him being a minor, his information is not public. But I was very curious to see what was going to become of this um, astrologically. Now, next up, I am going to be doing a natal chart reading for Shanquilla, like an official video. So y'all stay on the lookout for that because I know I've been getting a lot of requests for that as well. In the meantime, drop down in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think about this situation. And um, hopefully it was educational, informative. Once again, um, my prayers to this woman affected as well as her family. And I will catch y'all in the next video. Bye.